Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 373. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and well, welcome, welcome. It's been a while. Um, let's just say that uh, things are pretty same-ish. So let's not dilly-dally because we got a lot of news on the plate today. And first news is, Derpy Hoof was always Derpy Hoof for the DHX crew. So we all know who our favorite walleye mare is, and that's Derpy. But the but but she's well known for some people as uh, Bubble, Ditsy Do, Walleye, Male Mare, Muffins, and so on. So uh, I I think that's the quote unquote politically correct name for her. But anywho, as time goes on. She made appearance in the show, like she voice. She had a proper voice in a season. Oh wow, that's been a while. I forgot what season, but in episode one hundred. So that's really cool and awesome. And well, someone on the twitters asked Big Jim. Uh, Big Jim was a producer or director for the show. Mm, but anywho, um, he asks, now that the show is over production-wise, can you tell me if certain characters have behind-the-scene nicknames? I'm asking because I'm rewatching On Your Marks right now, and I get the feeling Bok Biceps' name was Roy Rage. And Big Jin replied, up until he was officially named, we refer to him as Steroid Pony. <laughs> Or the fan named Snowflakes, which is true, which is true. Um, I remember Snowflake being around a lot. But anyhow, um, we tend not to have nicknames for any official name characters, as that can get confusing. And the Twitter guy uh, replied, I had a feeling this was the unofficial name. By the way, do you prefer Derpy or Muffins for a certain Pegasi. And Big G replied, we always refer to her as Derpy all the way till the end. Oh, that's so cool. And yeah, oh man, um fun fact about the show Derpy was the quote unquote official mascot for the podcast uh, until well having Derpy as a mascot kind of uh how do I put this? It kind of works well because of the technical difficulty we had earlier on with recording the show, getting guests on, and so on. And yeah, I mean, it feels so on brand. <laughs> but we had to have our own identity and so on. But she's still the quote unquote official, I would say official, I would say unofficial mascot of the show. Uh, she's She's been special. Like, I remember way back in the days. Having this one uh, animation error of a character having eyes in the wrong position, getting that much attention, and having a lot of pull behind her, the fandom latched onto it really strongly, and she she somehow resonated with the fans. And well, I I, I for one love her a lot. I remember buying the Funko figure of her, and I remember, um, well, quote unquote, participating in the Save Derpy hashtag movement. And I bought a shirt from Wheel of Fine. Uh, it was a shirt with a pin and so on. I mean, I like Derpy. Derpy is something special. She she is just awesome. And well, I can't say much other than. She is amazing. She is literally amazing. From the arts of her, from the fanfics, from the radio plays that involve her. And yeah, I, I just like the character a lot. <laughs> I can't say much. And I don't know. Um, what do you guys think? Do you feel the same way? Do you. Wh how do you feel about Derpy? Like, uh, do comment on the link below or the. Yeah, the comments. Do comment. So anyway, let's move on to the next news. And next news would be... Hmm, no official pony panel at San Diego Comic Con this year. So with... 
this year, I think being the um, last season for ponies. And what I mean by I think is because we got no idea if he's going to bleed through to 2020. But still, um, with this being the last season, uh, it seems that Hasbro will not have a official My Little Pony panel in San Diego Comic Con because previously we had a few. They introduced things like uh, the shorts and specials, some songs, and you know some Q and A's. But this year, it seems we're not gonna get any. But they are going to show us some amazing toys. Like their their booth are going to still be there. They're gonna have Transformer toys and Pony toys and GI Joes. I mean. There's a lot, there's a lot. Hasbro does a lot. So, if you are going to San Diego Comic Con, do check out for the awesome stuff. But if you would like to participate in a panel, or just attend one, it seems that the fandom will have a panel there. And said panel will be called Fandom of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Beginning of the End, question mark. And, uh, wait, let's see. Um, San Diego... Mm. San Diego, California, 7 July. July. Are we in July? Yes. I don't understand this. But anyway, I'll just read it. Uh, yesterday, Comic Con International released their program schedule for Saturday, 20th of July. Out of the many panels that were announced, there is one whose subject is the fandom of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. The panel will be held at the San Diego uh, Marriott Marcus and Marina in Grand 10 and 11 on Saturday 20th July 2019 at 8pm. Ooh, that's a late one. Panelists will be sorry, panelists will include but not limited to uh, representative of Babs Con and Everfree Northwest and current and former members of the fandom such as AC Race Bass and yeah and so on. So that is pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. So if you are attending Comic Con, why not just pay them a visit? Who knows? It might be cool. And AC's there. Oh, huh, okay, cool. And let's move on to the next news. So next news is Pony, yeah, let's just say that this giant My Little Pony statue is from Hong Kong. So, uh, in Hong Kong, there was this event that had, uh, what you call this, um, po- it's a t- pony team event. Um, children of young and old went there to have fun and so on. And uh, I think the guys at the Hong Kong Brony Club posted some things there. So anywho, uh, they had a lot of cool things there, like um, like I, <laughs> I really don't know. Like um, there's this huge figure of Rainbow Dash, and it's I think what a balloon thing, and so on. And uh, it, it's more kid oriented, and you can see here there's sweet apple acres, and I you know say I think what this is kind of a treasure hunt for apples and stuff. And yeah, it's really cool and yeah, let's just say it's a fun event. But what people are really interested in is the um, giant pony figures from the uh, Standing Rainbow Dash. Yeah, (laughs) that looks creepy. And to the Twilights and so on. So these are really well made and I wonder if they are for sale or not because if this are for sale dang that is so good and as for the event I got no idea I I think it was a success yay but for the figure themselves they, they have a lot here like in this one specific picture there's an army of twilights they look good they if I were to say that this could resemble a version of the Funko Pops not Funko, the Funko Vinyls except that this one doesn't have Twilight's wing open so yeah um, as what can I say like 
it looks good. Like you got the Applejack here, you got the Twilight on books, and they say please do not climb, which I feel that's a valid warning. You got no idea if it's going to break or not, and you got no idea what it's going to be, what it's made of. Probably PVC or fiberglass, probably. But I don't know, um, this is cool, this is really cool. I would love to see this in my neck of the woods for a display. I think they did that before with Pinkie Pie. So I hope they do it again and I hope they get this because if this is something that Hasbro made and from the picture uh, over here, it looks like it's in bulk. They, they are planning, I'm thinking that they are planning to distribute this. So yeah, who knows, right? So anywho, last news for the week is um, new, new My Little Pony The Retro Show exclusive YouTube series. So mm, how, how do I want to address this? Um, this one is very interesting. Um, normally I wouldn't address this kind of things because it's kind of um, non-interesting because who wants to really check out stuff from Hasbro? But the reason why I just put it here is because the video itself, it's self-deprecating humor. They know how bad it is. They, I won't say bad. I, I, they know how silly it is. They know that the eighties show was really, really funny, silly. So they kind of put in a few snippets like, "Oh, Megan here got." hit by the crocodile and stuff i mean i'm i'm not reading it from read them um you can check it out yourself and it's pretty fun it's a s for a first episode thing it's kind of cool but in the long run i don't know it may get tired but if you're a fan of the original g1 ponies go check it out um you might get angry with how they are treating the characters who knows on, but on top of that, it seems that we are going to get a retro style uh, ponies, uh, G4 ponies. Yeah, but in the retro style of G1. So you get all of your main six, so the Shy Twilight, Rainbow Dash, Pinkie Pie, Rarity, and Applejack. But in their G1 style, um... I got no idea how much this is going to cost, but there is a pre-order on Amazon, so we both can look at the same time. And yeah, it's about $25. And it's on the pre-order. Estimated shipping will be about September 1st and so on. So yeah, that'll be cool. So if you are a fan of My Little Pony in general and if you're a collector this might be something that you'll be interested in who knows right and it'll be really interesting because if i do remember right uh some of the ponies or the g four ponies are kind of a callback to previous like rainbow dash was firefly App applejack stays the same because of licensing rarity i'm not sure pink Pie, oh man, there's a lot. Uh, Pinkie Pie, uh, she's changed because if I remember right, in the original she was called Surprise, which is a blonde white Pegasus, but changed into a pink Earth Pony in the fourth generation and so on. But still, uh, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool, really cool. So yeah, that's this news for this week. And like I said. If you're interested in the toys, go get them. Go get them. So anyway, um, let's go to my favorite part of the show. Or my, at least. Uh, that is, what have I been doing with my week? And weeks have, this week has been pretty slow. Because nothing exciting happened. Um, I think I mentioned last week I went to watch Spider-Man. And that's about it. But for this week... Um, you know, I I haven't done <laughs> I haven't done anything that's ooh or an ah worthy, but I did play a game, and it's not Overwatch this time, but I I did play that too, and 
said game is called Crypt of the Necrodancer and this game is a dungeon crawler with a twist instead of playing it or sorry instead of controlling your character however you want you have to play it with the beat so imagine playing Dance Dance Revolution and Dark Souls and yeah you, you, you get Crypt of the Necrodancer it's not an easy game but it's a rewarding game you know I think what games like that are always rewarding once you get past the learning curve and understand the mechanics you'll have a lot of fun and that is true for me because I had a hard time playing it and once I understand how to play it I enjoyed it and also I if I remember right yeah um, the music is awesome too being a rhythm game so it is a lot of fun and with the recent release of um, Cadence of Hyrule which is a Switch exclusive that involves the Legend of Zelda character played in the Crypt of the Necrodancer style and yeah it's a fun game it's a really fun game I've personally for me I've beat a lot of the stages and I am now on the character Arya and oh my god that that is hard I got no idea how to deal with that and I think I might be close to quitting so yeah hmm I don't know what to say <laughs> but um other than that I've been replaying Final Fantasy 7 with the added mod of the Remaco patch or Remaco mod on and it's pretty interesting I in all honesty I never finished Final Fantasy 7 because I don't know um to me it felt difficult at points but after a few years of playing it I felt it's kind of cool but one thing I am not happy or one thing I'm not satisfied about is the uh, Mako system or the Mako system whatever you want to call it it's cool and interesting I like it but it's tedious and you only experience or you only level those Makos up if you have it on your active party so if you want to use something you have to equip it and then if you pull a character out and put another one in you need to re add all those uh, Makos on then you need to balance out with the items and whatnot like the weapons uh, shields and like it's it's a bit tedious and it can get really really tiresome and with me putting the Remarco uh, mod on it's made the game a lot harder at parts like I think they rebalance the AI's uh, or enemy difficulty and attack pattern and right now if I am remembering right I am on the ship to Costa de something I forgot and this is the first fight with the part of Genova and oh my god that is really hard like right now it's hard with the mod on so I may uninstall the mod and replay the game a fresh start probably <laughs> and yeah that's a bit redundant but still um, we'll see and you know honestly Final Fantasy 7 the beginning part is a lot of fun but who knows like I've uh, I'll probably never finish it and just play the remake who knows but other than that um, that's my week haven't been doing much so if you guys have any questions concerns or suggestions for the show you can do so at mm, sorry uh, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thenbshow.gmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. You can also... Yeah, uh, <laughs> wow, I am off my game. 
Also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and stitch radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on ponyvlife.com. Links are in the show notes. Also, do subscribe and rate us on uh, iTunes and Stitch Radio for the review and discussion podcast. Over there, you'll catch me, Silver Quill, Sephiroth Heart Song, and also Totera reviewing the Pony episodes, comics, and movies slash specials. And also, we like to do other things. We like to talk about anime, games, comics, and cartoons. I think what one of the most... Uh, famous or infamous thing that we like doing is the American's Ladybug. It is a fun show and especially if you get, you know what, it's a fun show because you get to see Silver, Totara and even Seppi get confused by what the hay is going on. Sometimes even me, but I just enjoy it. And animes, uh, we don't do much, but the ones that we do are like Little Witch Academia and not much as I, as I said we don't do much anime which is surprising you would have thought that we do more than that hmm huh. I need to ask the guys what they want to do but anywho that's, a, that's another time for a few days so on so um, yeah <laughs> there's that if you'd like to support the show you can do so at patreon.com slash mbs show with every support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And, well, you also get a huge thank you from me. <laughs> Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Jeffrey, and also Master of Lag. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. Oh, one thing before I leave you guys. Um, next, what? In the coming weeks, I think, what, on the... Give me a second to open my calendar. Sorry about that. In, yeah, in, in about three weeks' time... Uh, yeah, dr- three weeks' time, BronyCon's happening. So, if you are attending BronyCon, be sure to say hello to Silver, Safi, and also to Terra, because they will be there. And, yeah, do do say a how do you do because I can't be there <sighs> life 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 gets in the way sometimes but if you are attending go say hello to him or go say hello to them take a picture of them and you know what post it on the Instagram tag me or tag the show at the NBS show at Norman Sanzo and who knows right like I hope you guys have fun there I hope you guys have an amazing time at BronyCon because this will be their last convention ever under the name BronyCon. Going forward, we got no idea what they're going to do. But yeah, um, I'm feeling a bit sad by this. But you guys who are going, you guys who are attending, be happy for me. Like, um, uh, what's the one I'm looking for? Mm, I, I don't know. But just have fun. Just appreciate the time that you have there. And just say hi to the guys. Like, I would love to meet them in person if possible. But eh, maybe another convention. Maybe another time. Who knows, right? There's always Everfree of West, right? I know that's Babs. So, yeah. So, anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. And... I'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya.